or cultic groups. Outside sources of information are unnecessary, and they're either denigrated or outright forbidden. Everything is focused on the cult's ideas. There is only one point of view. It comes from the Almighty Leader, and it is never to be challenged. A cult member is not expected to consider other ideas, but only to obey the leader, embody the transcendent belief system, and follow along with her peers. Her resulting compliance may become an example to others, and soon compliance and obedience will become the norm. When group compliance reaches a tipping point, leadership tends to become emboldened into exerting greater and greater pressure upon group members. Not only do the group's demands and expectations become more extreme, beyond the typical influence of peer pressure, for instance, but once compliance is a group norm, no one will be left to object or appeal for fairness or justice. If members somehow manage to object, which goes against every rule and norm of cultic groups, they will be reported, shunned, punished, demoted, or threatened with expulsion. The threat of expulsion or excommunication is a very potent one, due to the way that the outside world is framed by cultic groups. A young man raised in the holiness movement recalled constant warnings about the outside world. His group was persuaded to believe that the world was a deeply treacherous place. They filled us with fear about leaving. A lot of it was suggestions or examples about people who departed from the movement. They would lose their marriage, or they might end up losing their sanity, and a bunch of other things. I don't remember all the things, but it was all very fearful. Basically, you couldn't survive on the outside. Cultic systems of influence function as all-pervasive webs of interactions and social norms that serve the goals of the cult and its leadership. In these powerful webs of influence, members learn to adapt their thoughts attitudes and behaviors in deference to the group's rules, needs, and threats. Each group's systems of influence create a restricted social network and a confining culture that are regularly reinforced by each member's conformity and obedience. This obedience is often imposed, not through obvious punishments, but through an atmosphere of impossible expectations and constant criticism. How Systems of Influence Entrap People Social scientists have understood for decades that influence can be manipulative and that group systems can and do affect behavior in powerful ways. One early and classic study by renowned psychiatrist Robert J. Lifton offers a clear model for understanding the social and psychological manipulation that takes place in cultic groups. Lifton interviewed American prisoners of war captured during the Korean War, and he also observed and studied the behavioral modification processes that were occurring in Chinese communist schools under the leadership of Chairman Mao Zedong. Through his studies of people confined in these settings, Lifton identified eight social psychological techniques commonly used to create what he calls ideological totalism, or the assimilation of an individual into an all-or-nothing belief system that shuts off his or her ability to even consider other ways of thinking or being. Lifton found that this type of intense and unthinking dedication can be developed in almost anyone. It's a normal human tendency, which unfortunately makes all of us susceptible to systems of influence. In some cases, this susceptibility is exploited by apocalyptic groups to create fanatically devoted cult members who become willing and deadly agents of extremism. To some degree, all cultic systems of influence and control include a combination of the eight social psychological influence techniques identified by Lifton. As we describe each technique, we explore its connection to our bounded choice model. 1. Milieu Control The group controls all communication and information, which includes each individual's communication with herself. This sets up what Lifton calls personal closure, 
where the person no longer struggles with thoughts of what is true or real. Milieu control works to isolate members and silence internal doubts. It is part of cultic systems of influence and systems of control. 2. Mystical Manipulation The group asserts that they or their leader have divine, supreme, or political power. The group or the leader may orchestrate events that support their supposed power or verify their central beliefs, and then pretend that these events occurred spontaneously. The leader may also manipulate or reframe information to his or her advantage and to assert his or her supreme authority. Mystical manipulation is connected to a group's transcendent belief system, charismatic authority figure, and systems of influence. 3. Demand for Purity The group demands absolute dedication, and the leader is the ultimate moral authority who decides whether the dedication is sufficient. It almost never is. This creates an atmosphere of everyday punishment and humiliation. It also sets up an environment of competition where members will spy on and report each other. This demand fills people with crippling amounts of guilt and shame, such that they may lose touch with their own sense of morality. The demand for purity is connected to a group's systems of control, systems of influence, and the charismatic authority figure. 4. Cult of Confession The group requires public confession and self-exposure. In many cults, Increasingly extreme acts of self-exposure are celebrated as signs of true dedication. Members may lose their sense of balance between self-worth and humility, between what is private and what should be shared, and between their personal self and their idealized group self. This loss of balance and boundaries may entrap members such that they may feel almost owned by the group. The cult of confession is connected to a group's systems of influence. 5. Sacred Science The group asserts that it has the ultimate truth. Challenges are not allowed, and questions are dismissed, treated superficially, or thrown back at questioners. This shuts down members' critical thinking capacities and inhibits their creative self-expression and personal development. Life is perceived only through the filter of the group's transcendent belief system. No other beliefs or ideas are allowed. 6. Loading the Language The group creates specialized jargon or communication techniques that is understood only by insiders, which makes members feel special. However, it also isolates members from the rest of society and reduces their capacity for imagination and original thought. Loading the language is a subtle yet potent way to enforce conformity, and it is connected to a group's systems of influence. 7. Doctrine over Person The group's doctrines, beliefs, and needs take precedence over anyone and everyone. Members must deny their own needs, private thoughts, and personal experiences if any of these contradict the group's doctrine. The past, of society and each member, is altered to fit the group's beliefs, and individuality is erased. The doctrine over person serves to create the cult persona, and it is connected to a group's systems of influence and transcendent belief system. 8. Dispensing of Existence The group makes ultimate decisions about who is an enlightened insider and who is an inferior outsider. Inferior people must be converted, and if they don't join or are critical of the group, they must be rejected and shunned as non-people, or as evil. In extremist cults, these non-people may be punished, harmed, or killed. People outside the group are stripped of credibility and humanity, which teaches cult members that there is no world and no life outside the group.
The dispensing of existence strongly suggests that group membership requires fanatical obedience, and it is connected to a group's systems of control, systems of influence, and transcendent belief system. These eight influence techniques serve to erase individuality and deconstruct members' core selves so that they can become perfect and unquestioning followers. People under the influence of cults is similar to that we observe in addicts. Typical behavior for both includes draining bank accounts, neglecting children, destroying relations with family, and losing interest in anything except the drug or cult.